Well, good morning, and you're watching another episode of Ryan Phelan's epic morning show in the morning here. And let's talk about price. Is the price nice? Should, should we uh, be talking about price more or less? Should we talk about pricing our home less or pricing it more? Let's talk about all these factors. First of all, let's talk about what makes your home's value or what, what gives your home's value. Certainly, I would love to have a magic wand and be able to be like, ping, <laughs> there you go. Your home is worth this. Unfortunately, no one has that power. Um, something else that doesn't really make an impact. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, and you'll hear a lot of people say this within the industry where they'll say, um, it doesn't matter what you want for your home or the, the number that you want for your home. It doesn't matter what you need for your home. The market determines the value. And yes, that's true, but I do find that a little bit, um, like demeaning or, um, I find it's like talking down down to people because ultimately if I wanted to sell my house for 400,000 but I could only get 380, well I'm just not selling it at that time, right? It's not saying that my house is um that I'm out to lunch or whatever or that what my wants and needs aren't important because they absolutely are. It's just maybe the timing isn't right. So, the other thing that does not determine market value is what your neighbor home is what your neighbor's home is listed for. Now, a problem could be that maybe your neighbor, maybe the person that your neighbor has hired to sell their home was either out to lunch or maybe they missed a few things and maybe they priced it really, really high, you know, like beyond what the market could bear. And maybe your house is even nicer than theirs, so you want to price above them. Well, that doesn't make much sense at all, right? There's only, there's, there's limits to everything, all right? So you got to keep that in mind. Saying all that, it isn't just the market that makes all these decisions. It's also the marketing and making sure that you market the homes properly. That includes building up interest prior to listing the home. How do you do that? With that uh, coming soon sign over there, not just any, like any joker can go and throw a coming soon sign in the lawn, but actually going out there, reverse prospecting, um, going out there and um, talking to other agents, getting it out there on a really big website like remax.ca um, under, under coming soon. And so it's actually listed on there, just maybe not on the MLS yet. So you're driving interest. So, day one or technically day zero on market you will have a bank of people that are already chomping at the bit to get to it so that's that's one thing you can do marketing wise to really kind of drive up the interest um competition between buyers um and just like the anticipation that this your product your home is is coming to the market so there's that. The other thing, and I think this is really important, beyond granite and updating bathrooms and kitchens and doing all this other stuff, is cleanliness. Just making sure your home is really clean. Um, there, you got to be careful on smells. I mean, even if it's what you think is a pleasant smell, um, some people might not like it. If they're, you know, maybe from a different culture, you know, maybe they're not used to that smell and they're like, oh, what is... What is that? Or maybe they're allergic. Maybe you have, um, oh, you're going to sprinkle some cinnamon around and maybe they're allergic to cinnamon and that's going to like, or cloves, or, and that's just going to make them totally not interested in the home and have to leave before they even can see it. So these are all things to kind of take into consideration. I know um, some people can be very allergic to artificial scents that are out there. So just be careful on that side as well. But ultimately, cleanliness and depersonalization are huge because you want the buyer to come into the home and you want to elicit a feeling. And the feeling you want them to have is that this, oh yeah, like, I could live here, right? This is, that's why staging does well. 
because there's no furniture and they can they can't imagine themselves having their morning coffee or um you know doing the netflix and chill or doing anything like that they they uh they need to imagine these things and and of course you know beyond that having the nice bathroom the nice kitchen where people can really envision themselves um having that lifestyle but it all starts with um cleanliness depersonalization because if there's pictures of um yourselves the sellers all over the place buyers are going to look at that and then they're going to be like oh that's the johnson's home or that's the phelan's home you know like that's it's not ours right it's that's that's how they like things and that's how um that's their pictures everywhere right so pictures down is a big one um looking at how some of these builders some of these builders can stage things really really well and when you go there it, it's actually not even that practical because there'll be there'll be no tv up there'll be uh um you know some of their furniture layout might seem a little bit awkward if you really really think about it but what they're doing is they're maximizing space and really kind of giving like a warm inviting feeling so those are the things that you can do to to give a really good effect on um on selling your home without putting really any money into it um stay tuned follow up with uh, other videos because i will be talking about your top three things you can do um to stage your home and um maybe some things that you don't want to do and i'm gonna say until next time stay epic but in the meantime heart like do all those things subscribe and um if you want to talk about how to price your home correctly for today's market give me a shout ryan phelan and uh till next time stay epic yeah.